you all can just stay muted throughout the session. Um, Laura will have a Q&A toward the end. And at that point, if you'd like to unmute, you're more than able to. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you all for joining us uh, for another Microsoft Reactor live stream event. Uh, my name is Rebecca Karen, and I am the New York Reactor event planner. I am happy to welcome Laura Graham Brown with us again on Microsoft MVP for another session. Uh, today, Laura will introduce you to Power BI using Dataverse. Um, this session will run for approximately 60 minutes. Laura will try to answer questions throughout the session, but we'll be reserving additional time at the end. Um, if this is your first time joining us, please note that our session um, generally the format is if you can just drop questions uh, and comments into the chat um, and we will respond when we have the opportunity. I'll be answering anything reactor related. Laura will answer anything related to the content. Um, attendees, please review uh, on the next slide the code of conduct. Also, please be aware that our session um, offers uh, closed captions. If you need that for assistance, just go to your menu bar, click on the three dots, and then you'll see the opportunity to turn um, that on through meeting options, turn on live captions. Um, there's also the, sorry, just saw a message coming through. Um, the check-in option, if you'd like, we just started that recently. I dropped the link in the chat. I will drop it again if you're just joining us now. I, I don't believe that older chat messages are visible if you just popped on. So if you'd like to check in for our session, that would be great. Um, and at this time, Laura, I think I will have you pop on and start and intro yourself. Thank you very much, Rebecca. That's Enjoy. great. Okay, guys, welcome. Sorry, you're, to... uh, you're still muted. Am I? No, Am I can't I hear you. I can hear you, Laura. Okay, thank you very much. You. Thank you. Okay, um, welcome, welcome to my session. Thank you for those people who are coming back to yet another session done by me for the reactor. Um, I'm active on Twitter. I'm Laura GB. I also have a blog, Hatful of Data. I am a MVP business applications, which means I come from the biz apps side of Power BI rather than I was a DBA and a data and database side. Um, I've been doing this far too long as a, as a trainer, a consultant and presenter in the last few years. So please, if you have questions midway, please throw them into chat. Um, we will open up mics at, at, if, if they're needed later on. And please feel free to ask questions, okay? Um, I will try and put some time at the end of the Q&A, but given my record, I'm I'm not very good at it. I run over. So we're going to try today. We're going to try. I've limited the content. So what are we doing today? Um, we are looking at, we're getting PowerPoint to work first. We are looking at um, PowerPoint. I'm not sorry, PowerPoint. Problems. We are looking at Power BI. OK, an introduction to Power BI, and this is what this is aimed at. I'm going to use Dataverse as my data source just to illustrate that as well, because I try and use a different data source every time. But to create a report, there are five main steps. OK, get your data, transform it. I tidy it up, make it, make it clean, make it into tables. And in some situations, that's the hardest part. Um, get the modeling right. Do all those things in there, and we'll do a little bit of those in this example. Then add in some the visuals, the pretty bits, the, e the, the the nice bits we all like doing, and then publish it. Okay, and so we will be looking at a very. Uh, we've only got an hour, so I'm I, I can't do lots in all of those things. Um, but if you have a look at your time split on these stages, they aren't even. Okay, getting the data. If you're in a large organization, that is quite often the hardest thing to do. Um, then there is transforming and modeling. And these are high priority. If you get transformer modeling right, the visualize and the publish are really, really easy and take virtually no time at all. OK, there are people out there, by the way, who are superb at visualizing. I am not. I am the person that enjoys doing transformations and the modeling side. When it comes to the pretty side, I, I let the experts do that. 
um, and then the publishing at the end. And I'm hoping we will go all the way through those stages today. Um, so I, I then highlight those in red because they're the important ones to get right. So before you even start all of that, the, the question to always ask is, why am I bothering? Why am I doing this report at all? Uh, what question are we answering today? OK, so there's my little cute guy. With, with, with all the questions and the questions we're asking to answering today. Today, I am looking at the Northwind um, database. I've got a, a version of it in Dataverse. Um, so we're going to go for we've already got a couple of months worth of data. So we can look for how many or how many orders we had. OK, let's pretend we started up an, a, a new section of Northwind. Who are our best three customers and which was our best month? OK. Um, <laughs> I like Jason, Jason's comment in chat. I've never made a pretty graph in Pab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen pretty graphs. They just were never made by me. Um, so, but I am going to show you my, my cheat to doing pretty stuff in Power BI when, when we get there. So, here is our thing. We're going to take Dataverse. We're going to go. We're going to have to do some things in Power Query, okay? Um, and then we're going to put it into Power. BI. That's the wrong logo. I forgot this slide had an anima animation in it. There's a new logo. It shows how old this slide is. Um, the, we're, we're then going to put it into Power BI, and then we're going to publish it up to the service. So, Dataverse is you can do either import data or direct query. Okay, um, they have pros and cons both ways. So, import if Import has the advantage. It opens fast. It's the, the, the reports react fast, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And also has possibly the advantage, maybe it's a disadvantage, that when you're connecting to when you're connecting to the report, it's using whoever whoever created the report's permissions. Whatever the connections they put in, that's what gets used. And it's really flexible. You can do all sorts of things with your data and you can you, you can merge and do all sorts of things in Power Query and get away with it and no problem at all. Direct query, on the other hand, you always get. You always get um, the latest version of the data. OK, that there is no scheduled refresh. It just refreshes. It's always whenever you load the report, it's got the latest version of the data. But that means the report has to go and fetch it, which means it's slow. OK, now, according to what you're doing, up to I've, I've been told, so I, I went away and asked the right person, and they basically turned around and said, up to 100,000 records. Um, whoever's got their mic open, can they turn? That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, up to 100,000 records, you're fine with limited columns. Okay, you've got to make sure you're whatever you're bringing in, uh, what, what, what you finally send to your report is small enough. Okay, but the report will be slower to react, but it will have um fresh data and you could do combinations of those i am not going to have time to cover that today um but you need to understand what you're doing and understand what you're ticking by default it will go for import okay and if you're new to power bi and there's no reason to have up to the minute data and by the way 90 percent of the time there is no reason to have up to minute data import might work for you the other advantage of direct query is it uses the report viewers permissions and Dataverse. Um, for those of you that know about Dataverse, you can have really complicated permissions so that each team member can only see their own contracts. That kind of thing can be done really easily inside Dataverse. And Power BI could then make use of those permissions rather than Power BI having to replicate. So that is enough talking. Let's go and do a demo. Um, going back to uh, there's a question in chat from Nico. Is Dataverse University available? Cost D three six five. It's so um, Dynamics three six five is basically. Uh, I, I realise I'm not going to be popular in saying this. Dynamics three six five is basically apps on top of Dataverse. That's what it is. So whichever part of Dynamics you're looking at, it's it's there. Um, Dataverse is also available to lots of power to lots of parents people. It's also available in teams. So te if your tenancy allow it. Um, so Dataverse is, is outside of Dynamics as well. Um, 
but it is the backbone of dynamics. So let's move across. Oh, I've minimized something in this window. That's meant to have a window open. That's meant to have a window open in here. So let's let's quickly go to Power BI first. Here we are in Power BI. If this is the first time you've, if this is one of the first, you've, if you are a real beginner in Power BI, please install it from the store if you can, um, because it'll update automatically and it updates about once a month. But you usually get about 10 updates a year. Um, and all of these things have got nice links to all sorts of things. Go and have a look. Microsoft have lots and lots of learning stuff out there for you to add on. OK. So. Let's go. So I, I'm explore that. Explore that on your on your own time. OK, so we're going to connect to Dataverse and up here there is a Dataverse button. If you're not going to go, if, if you don't spot it up there, or if you're looking elsewhere to see what else there is in here. If I go to get data and click more. And go under Power Platform, you'll see there's two of them. There's the common data service. Please don't use that one. That one has limitations um, in the amount of data it can fetch and all sorts of things. Um, and it's using an old OData connection. And this is the one we want. This is the same as this one up here. OK. And let's click connect. Thank you. I, my my, my favourite person is, is doing my links for me in, in, in the bottom. What is Dataverse? There's, there's a great link down there. So it asks the first thing it asks you is the environment domain. OK, so we're going to go back to the window I was in a moment ago. This one here. So I am here in Power Apps. This is the best way to find it. And the chances are if you're using Dataverse somewhere, you will have a model driven app of some sort. So if you go into a model driven app, it gives you a link at the top here. OK, and the part of the link I want is just the name in the middle. OK, so I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it into there. If you include the HTTPS, so any forward slashes, it gives you an error, which which about um, connecting to it um, about an SQL error. OK, that's because it can't find the database. I am going to go for imports for simplicity case. OK, um, I will. If, if we get time, I will show you one report that's direct. And we're going to click OK. So. In here, one thing. One thing to to note here, OK, all these names that are down here, they are the internal names of all of your tables. So if you if you want the, if you want that, um, you might have to go and look it up and work out what the different tables are because they aren't always named in the clearest things in the world. But all of my Northwind ones start with Nwind, Northwind, so I can find them quite quickly. So I am going to go for order details orders and products because I need to know about what products did well and what the orders were and, and, and what was sold. OK. Is there a data dictionary available for Dataverse? Um, no. Um, there are multiple tools out there that will help you. Um, there probably is a data dictionary for some of the dynamic stuff, um, but there are multiple tools out there that will help you build a um, data dictionary of what your dataverse is because you, these have been added manually. OK, so um, XRM, XRM toolbox is one of the things I would use. Um, and I also use a, a connector from Excel. So I am so I've, I've picked my three tables. Um, but if you look here, there are lots of columns that I really don't want. OK, so I am going to click transform data. And it's put it in the wrong window. So let me just move that to the right window. Faras, I don't understand your question. If you can clarify a little bit more, then I can help. Um, 
so I've got my three tables here. OK, and they've got way too many columns. So what I'm going to do is so on order details. The first thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to limit my columns. So I'm going to go down to um, choose columns. And unselect them and I know the columns I'm looking for in here, so I am going to look for. Um, actually. They all start with N. And wind again, so I'm going to go for order ID, product ID. So what product was what order was it? What product was ordered and what's the quantity? OK, and. I can then rename these columns to be something slightly more friendly. It is worth doing. OK, and. If anyone's trying to get a report out a report out via me out to a customer and they haven't done this part, it gets rejected. OK, so uh, it's, it's one of those things that needs to happen. Um, because it's coming from a clean database, I've got my data types. They've all come through nicely. OK, and I'm going to call that table. What are details? OK, so I'm just going to quickly go into here and do the similar thing. I'm going to choose some columns. Remember to unselect before you start searching. OK, so that you unselect them so that you can go and find them. Um, so I'm sure I'm just quickly looking at my list of my my list of things in there. I am doing orders, aren't I? So I am doing orders. We're going to go for an order ID. We're going to go for an order date. And so status ID. And status ID name. I'm going to pick up both. That's an option column inside this one for those of you that know about Dataverse. Um, and I need to have both bits there to work. And um, I am then going to go for customer. I'm not seeing it. Customer. Let's search for customer. Customer ID name. That's the one I want. And there we are, both come through. Let me just have a quick check of the errors. Um, where can I get? <laughs> um, so Dataverse for, for inventory or accounting data. Um, I, I, I need some more clarification on that one first. I think let's see, let's see what we put down there. Where can I get the Northwind? Uh, where can I get the Northwind solution? Um, Keith, there is a link on um, that. There, there's an app and a solution that you can download from Microsoft. Um, when I I will find the link and I will tweet it out. Um, and also, Keith, I'll point you in the right direction as to where 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 I've got a copy of it as well. Um, if you can't if, if I can't find the link, but we'll sort it. Um, I'm stuck to SharePoint list. Dataverse is too expensive in my organization. Um, if they've got um, teams, um, I, I totally understand where you're coming from, Bruce. It, it, there are organizations where they say it is um, teams um, Dataverse for teams is. But if it's something you want to expand your skills on, Go and have a look for a developer account and you can get a developer tenancy to up your skills. Um, which Dataverse? Keith, I don't understand your question. Um, sorry, I, I, um, how, do I add, how do I use or add Dataverse? Um, please, there's a link Fernando put up earlier regarding um, the um, what is Dataverse. So please get, take a look in there, and if you still get stuck on it, reach out to me on Twitter. Okay. So can you mute your mic, please, whoever's whoever is not muted? Thank you. So let me do. So let's rename that one to be orders, and we're then going to go to um. We're then going to go to our final one, which is products. And in this one here, I am going to go to choose columns. And we're just going to pick a couple of columns here. I'm going to go. So we will again put in the end wind and the product ID. And I'm going to go for the product name. There's lots of other bits in here I could bring in as well. But today, the only one that I'm really interested in is the list price. So limit your limit your um, your query down to just the columns you need, because at the end of the day, 
the more data you are dragging in, the slower your report is going to be. OK, it's going to be slower to refresh. It's going to be slower to view all sorts of things. And there is actually a, a limit to the size you can put in there. Um, if you are, it's quite large, it's gigs, but there is a limit to the size you can have. OK, so limit it down to here. Now, one of the other important things to do is also to consider, and I can't do too much about it, but um, there's a guy out there called um, Alex, du uh, Alex Dupler, I think it is. Oh, it's the other Alex, um, who does a thing about query folding. OK, and if you can query fold, what it means is the query gets sent back to the database in its whole thing. So don't load all the data and then sort it. And if I do a right click on this step here, you'll see there is a, a link here that says view native query. And there you are. There is the SQL behind it. That's what gets sent back to Dataverse. OK, Dataverse is good at getting data and bringing it back. That's what that's for. OK, but. If you do a step that breaks that, it can't translate it back into SQL, then it becomes a little bit slower. OK, so the further you can get down this query and do a, a right click and still get a view native query, the better your report will behave. There is a 30 day um, query folding challenge, which Alex has put up a whole set of videos that works. I will put out a link to that at the end of this. Um, I'll probably put together a blog post with all the links for today. OK, in it. Um, oh, Sheridan, you're my favourite person. Um, you've just found the links of um, the Northwind install. Um, I was going to have to go and search through, through my history to find that one. Um, Sheridan has put up the links for to answer the question earlier from Keith with regards to how to get it. Um, the one thing I've done is I've updated all the dates because it was really old data. So I've updated my orders so that they are happening this year rather than 2006. So I've done my things. I've been through. I've checked. I haven't renamed things. I haven't renamed things. Did I rename that one? I renamed that one. I got distracted, obviously. My apologies. Let me just quickly do that, guys. Make sure your names are clear, OK, and work and, and make some sense to people because you need it so other people can work with your data model. So there that's all done. So now we're going to press close and apply. Fernando, what's that link to? So we've loaded data. OK, I can see my three tables over here. Oh, thank you, Fernando. Um, you, the, you put my so that's the link that he's put in there for the 30 days of um, query folding, which I, I recommend you do. And by the way, if you're on Twitter, please, please do do put up that you're doing it. Um, you'll get loads of support. There are the three tables there, OK, and I can see the columns listed alphabetically underneath. If it is an input query, not direct, I can go and have a look at the data over here and I can filter it and sort it and explore it. And the last few, so there's three buttons on the left here. The last one here is relationships. And here we are. We can see our three tables that are here with relationships and so I've got a one to many. So one product. And they're linked by the product ID can have many orders. OK, and one or order details. It's put it in the wrong. Sorry, it can have many order or um, order details records. And this orders here is linked by order ID because that is one order can have multiple order details lines. OK, so. Let's get let's let's remind ourselves what we're trying to do. OK, so 
we our first question was how many orders have we had now rather than letting um power bi make up measures for you we're going to write the measures so i am going to go for a new measure let's just zoom in on that text to make it nice and big and we're going to so we're going to have um a measure called orders so i take away all the text and i put in the word orders and this is dax this language okay and it's it's basically excel but with loads of extras so we've got some of the functions that we expect to see so if i start to type in count you'll see there is count count a count blank which are things that we see in excel the ones with the x on the end we'll come back to um but we're going to go for count and then i want to count something and it's showing me all the fields that i could count escape we'll get rid of oh We'll get rid of that list. I wanted to get rid of the, the help, but obviously not today. Um, we're going to come down here and we're going to go. So it's orders and every order has an ID. So we're going to count the orders ID. And I press return and it appears to do nothing. It's put it over here inside one of the tables. Doesn't matter which table it's in, really, apart from being able to find it. And you can move it on the home table over here on the left if you have to. But let's display that number. So on the visualizations, I'm going to click on the card. And I'm going to click on orders. And there we are. We've got 39 orders. OK, so that shows me how many orders I've got. That answers one of my questions. My next question was, what's my best customer? Well, let's let's put up a couple of charts to show that. So if I just go the really simple version first. It, inside my customers inside sorry, inside my order, I've got customer. So I'm going to click onto there and I didn't pick a visual. I just clicked and it guesses a table because it's a text field. OK, and I'm going to click on orders. As well, the measure that I wrote, it's got a little calculator next to it shows a measure and there we are we can see the number of measures there are the number of orders there are per customer and i could put that in a bar chart and there we are we've got a list of our customers and a little bar chart showing how many orders are there but that's any count of orders um i want to go for a money Okay, at the end of the day, my finance department wants to know about money. Um, coming back to did the tables in did the tables in Dataverse already have relationships? Okay, so I'll uh, before I carry on with doing the next measure, I'm going to go back and answer that question about relationships. So yes, there were relationships in, and Power BI does use them if it can. If it can't work them out, it guesses. OK, and it's guessing is based on if the field names are the same and the data types are the same, it will assume they are a relationship, which sometimes has some interesting results. Um, so now and again, Power BI will get it wrong. If it does get it wrong, OK, too many times. What I do is I turn around and go, right, fine, delete everything. Come into options and settings. And into my data load of the current file down here, I've got these ticks here about relationships. So import relationships from data source, data first will give them those. Auto detect new relationships, it will also try. But you can untick those if it's just going to be daft on you. OK, and I quite often do. Because it does, if you don't remove all the columns, oh my goodness, you end up with way too many relationships. And sometimes the easiest thing to do is just to get rid of start again and turn that thing off first. So thank you for that question. Let's come back into here. So I was talking about money. So we've got the number of orders. I now want to know the money. So the money is. So let's have a look at our data over here. Our data over here, over here on the right. The money is the quantity in here for every row in order details. Time, take the quantity and times it by the related list price. 
So if you're an Excel person, you would take the quantity and times it by a V lookup of the of the price. That's what we're going to do. But it's easier in here because we've got relationships. So let's go for a new measure. And we're going to put in total value. Equals and we're going to in, in here use um, the sum X function. The sum X function takes a table and does an expression on every row in that table and adds them all together. So the, the table we're going to go for is we're going to go for our order details. So I start to type it in and it will find me the ones that match. And we are then going to take our quantity. And there it is, all the quantity. And we are going to times that by, and instead of VLOOKUP, we have a function called RELATED. And RELATED will go and find. So there we are. We can see all the fields that I could get via RELATED. And they are, there's products list price. So I can times it via that. And by the way, inside here, you can use shift return to, to add new lines in, etc., and it will lay itself out. OK. Um, and then we can press return. Let's bring in a card and put in that total value. And there we are. We've got a total value. OK. Now that total value is money. So let's make it look like money. In Power BI, you don't format that kind of thing here. You format that back at the measure. So I highlight the measure and there's the measure tools ribbon. And we are going to put in um, the kind of thing it's going to be. And this is an American company. So, hey, we'll, we'll play ball and we'll give it dollars. So United States. So there we are. We've got our dollars. Come in and I can come back to my chart here. And say, well, I don't really want to know about orders. So if you look at the visualizations pane here, I can get rid of orders. And I can bring in total value instead. OK, and it guesses if it puts it in the wrong place, you can always drag these fields to the right box. OK, so there we are. We've got our um, company BB is our best one up there. OK, and we can see the amount when we hover over it. It gives us the amount that's in there. Or once we've got our chart, we could decide we want to change it to something else. Uh, we won't go for pie, pie charts because everybody will laugh. Um, but we could click onto what's called a tree map, or, or we could go for a column chart, etc. Go for whatever works for your data and helps your users. So um, the other request, the, sorry, um, it's all being recorded, Ashana. So we are so you you can go back and review it, okay? Um, yes, I'm having to go at reasonable pace, okay? If you've got questions, please put them in. Please put them in chat. And if you want me to go, if you if you want me to go through over anything again, please reach out to me on Twitter, okay? So we've got our two measures, okay? Our one that does our count, and our one that does our sum x our total okay so that gives us our two things to go for our, our two totals here for our cards and we can just use them inside a chart so i've got one more bit of calculations in there and then and then i'm going to um i'm and then then what i'm going to do is i want to talk about dates next okay so dates one of the amazing things out there about Power BI is there is an, aw an awesome community and two of the guys who are um, the kind of um, the godfathers of our community are, are the guys I refer to as the Italians, Marco and Alberto. They run SQL BI. So I want to create a calendar. So rather than just me showing you a bunch of code, I want to show you where I get that calendar. So I'm going to come here. 
I am going to go to Google. I suppose Bing would work just as well. Let's just, let's, let's just type in search and this will work. So SQL BI and actually it comes up first because it's the one that I visit quite often. But if I just type in SQL BI and I type in single calendar, simple calendar. OK. There we are. There is um, Alberto doing a short video about it. But if you scroll down in here, you'll see there's a piece of code to copy. OK, and he does a great explanation about about all the things that are in there. OK, and I am going to do a copy. And then I am going to come back in to Power BI. And we want to make that a table. So I'm going to go to modeling. And I am going to go for a new table. And it gives you a code table equals, just like measure equals. And we're going to do a paste into there. Now, they're using it on their database. They've got a table called sales. We haven't got a table called sales. But you need to pick something that's got a date column in it. OK, so I am going to go for orders. Because that happens to have a column called order date as well. You've got to work out the size of the, cal the calendar that you want. So this is the start of the year and the end of the year. This, so what that does is that separates, that sets up two variables with what the years are going to start. You could replace all that just with a number if you want to. And then this really simple, this, this little tape down here, I know I realized it doesn't look simple, but I promise you it's not too horrific. Basically creates a calendar automatically and limits it to two years limits it between those two years and then it adds in some calculated columns. The one is the year of the date. The other one, next one is a month name and a month number. OK. And. I am going to. Um, John Keegan, I totally agree. I totally agree. I, I much prefer, I, I quite often do them in Power Query as well, but I didn't think that was fair on an introduction course, <laughs> on an introduction session. But yes, I, I, I um, there are there are reasons to do it in Power Query and there are reasons to do it in DAX. Um, and I will I will go with both of those. If I go and have a look in the data st the part here, I've got a date table. Which for some reason it's not refreshing properly, but there we are. We've got a date table. OK. Um, by the way, for, for the for going back to the comment that John has made um, regarding putting it in Power Query, it, it's it's a faster way to do it some other time to put it back into Power Query. Um, but it's a longer piece of code and it's not quite so there's not quite a such clean version out there that I have found to go to copy and paste. Perhaps I should create one um, or perhaps John should. Um, um, Fernando, put the questions in chat, put the questions in chat. Um, so I've got a date table here and the date table. So things you should know about date tables is mark them as a date table. OK, so I'm going to so up the top here. There's a mark as date table. Things will work better if you do. And so I press the button on the table tools ribbon and then it asks me which is the date column that I want to use. And then I can click OK. All of the links I have put up today and all of the things I've, I've gone through today, I will put up a blog post that covers them, that, that covers them all. And if you have more questions, I will add them to the blog post. OK, if I don't manage to cover them today, but I only have an hour, guys, and I want to go through the whole. Um, I want to go through creating a, a complete report, but please do reach out to me if you've got more questions. So that's created me a nice calendar. OK, I'm, there is one more trick, but I'm going to explain why I'm doing that trick rather than just doing it. So then we are going to come into here and the next part I've added a table. So when we add tables, we need to go and have a look at relationships and there's our date table, but it's not related to anything. OK, 
So I am going to take the order date and I am going to drag and I'm going to drop it into date. So there we are, we get a relationship. The same that from from one calendar, one date in there, it can have many on the order side. OK, so there's a one to many relationship that works. So we are then going to go back in to our visuals. So I am now going to create a report. Uh, I'll create a, a, a one regarding which month is the best. So if I look in here, I've got a month. OK, now my data happens to only be one year, but you, we could put a year in as well. But I'm going to go for a month. And I am going to put in there. The total value, so which month was best. And it's it's decided to put it in the corner. Let's drag it into the middle. OK. And I'm going to make it a column chart. So over here on the visualizations, I can pick a different one. OK, and you can try them all out. OK, you, you can go through these and, and work out which one works for you. OK, so you go through these visuals and work them out. But let's fix one thing first. It's put March first, which is the best month, which I suppose answers our question. But that's not what people expect to see. They expect to see the months in month order. So let's look at sorting. So top right hand corner. We've got a sort by so there's three dots in the top right. We've got a sort by. And we, so let's sort by month name because that makes sense. Well, that didn't quite work. It's it's actually put it in reverse order. So I'm just going to change the order of that sort of descending. I'm going to change to sort ascending. And it has sorted the months, but it's sorted them alphabetically because that's all, it's a text column. That's all it knows what to do. So let's fix that. So we don't fix that kind of thing here. We fix that back in the data. So let's click back on the data. Uh, Bill, we'll come to the detail, the, the drill down, I will come to it in a second. Let me just fix this one first. Um, and I can click on month name. And that's the column I want to sort, but I want to sort it by the month number. So up on the column tools ribbon. Under sort by column. There is a month number. OK, and when I come back into here. You'll see there we are. They have sorted correctly. Now I've got a blank and blanks appear and, and this something's weird going on in my data that I've got a blank, but they will appear occasionally. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of those blanks the easy way, which is there's a filter pane here. Let me just click get rid of that formula bar for a second. You can get rid of the formula bar, by the way, by clicking on something that doesn't have a formula and the formula bar vanishes. Um, Here's a filters pane. And in that filters pane, there's a month name and I can drop that down. And I can say I want all of them. But I don't want the blank one and you'll see it. It summarizes it. Say month name is not blank up here and that's what I want. So there we are. I've got my January to June and I can see March is the best month. So that answers that question couple of things though that people want so how can I drill down to the details of a particular bar so I'm going to answer that in two different ways um yes Toby it will be shared there will be um uh, it will go out I will put it as soon as it comes available in the reactor it's, it normally takes them about a week um I will tweet out I will put it on LinkedIn as I'm sure the reactor will as well um that they or, or that you can follow their YouTube channel they do have some amazing sessions going on all the time. So drill down. So if I click on to March. OK, so what I did was a single click. You can see it's reduced the value. It shows me there were eight orders and it shows me over here. The different amounts that I've got. OK. If I. Um, Shows, shows, shows me the different values that different values that we've got. And if we did the other way around, such as I go and click on company C, 
I get it show, highlighting here what those are and I can see the different amounts here. If I, I'm going to have to do one change to do, was that what you wanted, Toby? No, that's, that was another question, Toby. Sorry, Toby, wrong person. Bill, was that what you meant or did you mean proper drill down? Um, as in, so I mean, if you are, I'm going to assume you mean to proper drill down. So I've got a couple more things to share, that, guys, and then I am going to be open to questions. I am going to add one more thing on to this one here. Um, I'm going to add in a week number column. Actually, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. My apologies. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not going to make it more complicated. I'm just going to go there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to do a drill down another way as well. The underlying details making up the rolled up value. So, um, okay, let me, let me, let me show you different ways of there, there's, there's different ways of there's different ways of doing what you're asking there. So let me just show you a couple of ways of doing that. Um, One is onto this month. I want to be able to drill down and actually see in March how did it spread across the whole of March. So under month name, I am going to drag in and I go drag it in underneath because it's the smaller one. You start with the bigger one at the top. I'm going to put in date. And that then allows me to be able to do a turn on drill down and then I can click on a month. And I can see it, it across different dates. Now they're not prettyly formatted dates, but that shows me how it went across those various months. Okay. The other part that you could do, okay, is I could have a table that shows me the um, order ID, the customer, or maybe not the order ID. That order ID is horrible. Um, maybe not the order ID, the order date. Um, and the status, let's put that in there. OK, so I've got a little table down here showing it. I could, and if I then click on March, there you are. You can only see the ones that happened in March. OK. Um, so I'm what I'm going to do. Is, um, the other part that can happen is you can in here um, export data, but that usually only shows you the summaried version of what you're looking for. So there's, there's multiple ways of getting what you want. The other way is to be able to do a, a drill through to another page that shows you more details. That's another way to do it, which I don't think I'm going to quite have enough things through, but that's what you're looking for. Drill through is probably what you want to Google. Um, so I'm going to publish this and then I'm going to read Fernando's long, long question. Um, so, oh no, sorry, I'm going to show one more thing. One more thing. I said I don't do pretty things, and I'm not very good at pretty things. I'm going to delete that table just for a second, just so this works for this next little bit. I am no good at pretty, but there is an amazing guy called Chris Hamill, who does, who has a website called Alluring BI, um, and he came up with a great te te technique to make reports look pretty. And that is to create a picture to be the background and make it simple. OK, so I've selected no visual. I've clicked on formatting. And I'm going for page background. And I'm going to click on add image. And I've got a background. OK, it's mostly transparent, apart from one little bit in the corner. Um, and I created it in PowerPoint. And Chris Hamill has quite a good way of doing it. I will put out a link for that later. And so you put that in, you can't see it because, hey, it's 100% transparent. Let's remove that transparency. And image fit says normal. And let's change that to say fit because the picture's too big. And there we are. We've got a background has appeared. It's put me in a couple of green lines in, which looks really simple, but it works for customers. And I put a logo in. People like their logo on reports. Somebody paid for that logo, so make sure you include it. If you've got things that overlap a little bit, 
we can always go to the formatting and all these things have formatting. So go and play with the formatting and I can turn off the background. And there we go. We can see it all in there. OK, um, I can also include a text box up here um, with with um, borders in, etc. Make the text bigger, put it up there. I'm not going to spend too much time formatting because I just want to do a publish and then have some Q&A time. So that order should be bigger. I totally agree. Do you want to save your changes? You need to save before you send it. So I'm going to call it Reactor. And then hopefully it's thinking about it. And I'm going to go for LGB demo. And it takes a little while to connect. And if we then go and have a look back in here, um, there is my new report. It says reactor. I can click on, so I picked my workspace off the list. I can click on Reactor. And there is my report, okay, that I can share with people. Now, if you don't have a license, you can't save to a workspace if you haven't got a pro license, but you can save to my workspace. So everything that's in Power BI that I've shown so far, you can do for free, okay? You don't have to sign up for anything. As soon as you want to put it in Power BI workspace, and share it with people, you need to have a pro license. So let's read Fernando's question. Unless somebody else already answered it. I created a fact table. So the fact table is the one that's got the information in it. And in this chart, this, in this case, it's the order details. Okay, so they've got the facts and all the other tables are, are known as dimensions. From a wonderful campus app that I developed with several columns. Um, Um, I, I, t t I don't, so Fernando, I, I, if, if it, with a patch not working, I'm not going to get diverted onto that, but reach out to me on Twitter. You, 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 um, you have me on Twitter. I know you do because you've reached out to me before. So reach out to me on Twitter and let's see what we can do. Okay. If somebody hasn't already answered it. I'm new to Power Apps and Power BI, uh, from a NoSQL database. Do I need to fetch data and save it as an Excel file? Um, it, what's your, um, Joffrey, um, what's your database um, behind the scenes? Because there's a possibility if it could allow you to do an OData or a REST API, or is there a way of exporting out CSV? Um, you could also do it that way. But uh, if there's an automatic way to do it, that would be so much nicer. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for the, link, for the link up there, Fernando. Um, have a look through. If you don't find a way of getting in there, I, I do a lot of I spend a lot of time in Power Query getting people connected to data sources that are, are not on the standard list. OK. Um, yeah, ODBC. Yeah, ODBC. Yeah, um, it would be nice. I told if, if, the, if the data is already in, in the cloud, then yes, it'd be nice to not have to go via a desktop. I totally understand that. Um, um you, if there's a rest api to the database that that if there is one exposed that that would be the one of the ways i would consider going um going to evelyn's question outside that so you're having a search box in a report okay so i am assuming evelyn that um, please tell me if you please tell me if you're doing something else that you're bringing in a visual. So you're doing that off your get more visuals. Uh, you are doing an import. Um, that's not what I wanted. I didn't mean import. My apologies. I meant get more visuals, not an import. 
And you are, I'm going to guess that if you're doing a text search, you have gone for uh, this one here, text filter. It's got a blue tick next to it, which means it's a certified one. OK, by Microsoft. Ah, great. Yes, thank you. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to do I'm going to bring in a that. So that's now appeared here. OK, hasn't appeared on the page yet. So I haven't added it. But what I can do is I can come into here and go for text filter. Um, what fields are we going to add in? Let's add in. Do you know what? Do you know what? We're going to delete it off this page a second. I'm going to go into a second page and I am going to bring in my list of products. OK, so I haven't looked at products very much, but there's a product name. See, look, there's lots of things in there. OK, and then I'm going to bring in your text search filter. And I'm going to bring in product name to be my one field. And if so, this is so this is bringing one in. And if I start typing mix, and then click search, there you are. See, it filters that list on the right hand side down to only show the ones with mixing. It's quite a it's quite a useful one to have. But you say there's no way to update the text. So when we're looking in here, there is a size. And you are right. This is one of the issues of custom visuals is they might be certified by Microsoft to work, but that doesn't mean they've got all the features that you want. So unfortunately on this one, I don't think there's anything we can do. Um, because that text size, I don't think I can change. Um, unless it's using the theme, I will have to look at that, Evelyn, and 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 just go, and, um, and go and have a look. Um, but there doesn't appear to be an easy way to do that, and I don't think it's going to be picking up theme things, unfortunately. Let's go and see. Let's go and see. Let's go and do a quick chest. Um, as you know, I'm I'm going to come back to that one, and I will, if I don't get time today, I will I will have a look at that one. Um. This is not. A... OK. Um, can you increase the font within? No, I can't. I, I can't. I can't. I don't think I, I don't think I can. I'll see if I can do that through theme. Um, coming back to Jason's comment. OK. Power platform is for system developers. Um, and subject matters experts. OK, fine. The Power BI side, OK, let me go to I, I have raced through. I am very aware I have raced through a huge amount of topic. What I wanted to show you was it's possible. OK, so please go back and read through things and how it works. But then also inside inside Power BI, there is help and there is guided learning. And here we are, OK, and guided learning. They've got some um, they've got some brilliant paths in here. Consume data with Power BI, um, introduction to um, develop with Power Platform, but consume data with Power BI or create analytical reports things. Walk through these. These will teach you the basics. OK, and. Um, I, my Power BI introduction course that I teach is two days long. And I warn everybody at the beginning that it's low code in as much as I'm not going to ask you to install Visual Studio. But I am going to ask you to write some code, OK? But the most code I'm going to get people to write is going to be the equivalent of, has it gone? My date table, OK? There will be some more complicated things than that, but that's the kind of level that coding is going to. So this is low code in comparison to 
the hundreds of thousands of lines that are sat behind the pro devs doing their wonderful things that they do. The person that created that text search box will have probably written hundreds of lines of code to get there, but they are a pro dev. They're not a loco dev or a citizen dev, however, whatever you want to whatever you want to call citizen devs. OK, so no, this is not straightforward, easy, easy, easy stuff. But it doesn't take a huge amount to get to a point where you can create reports. I took a company um, with no Power BI knowledge, um, working with them to winning awards at Power BI reports. Nothing to do with my nothing to do with my hard work, by the way. That's all of their hard work, totally their hard work. Um, but they had data, they had problems. And to tell you the truth, that's how you learn, is you have a challenge you want to solve. That slide that I had the questions on is where you begin. Start with something you want to solve and some data, OK? But do go through the, the guided learning parts on here. And if you've got feedbacks for these, do come back. The other, the other people that will give you some help as well is the SQL BI guys. Uh, they have training and they have chunks of it that's free. So go and have a look at them as well. OK, they are um, they, they do a stunning job. And if you've got a budget, they've got some online courses as well as some visiting courses. OK, but go and find this. there is plenty of Power BI stuff there to help you. OK. OK, any questions? Can I send the link to Guide Learning Path? Of course I can. Quite happy to share that. SQL BI, is, they are outstanding. They are absolutely amazing. Um, and if you have um, the Gyna Cube, are the other people that I should mention at this point, um, who also have... Um, so Gyna Cube are two Microsoft people who have too much time in their outside of their, their working job. They're not paid to do this. This is not what I wanted. I wanted a guy in a cube on YouTube. Um, guy in a cube on YouTube. Uh, so I'm not finding the right things here, but they have a huge, huge, huge amount of there's their channel. Um, Go and see these. These guys are incredibly helpful. Microsoft do not pay them to do what they do on these reports. Adam doesn't sleep, as far as I can tell, um, and produces reports at four a.m. Um, videos at five a.m. in the morning. Um, that's what he does. Okay. So please reach out to me if you've got any questions. I will send out links to the various things I have put out there. Um, I will also put a link to here in the chat. Apologies to people who found it too fast. Um, please go through the the, the um, revision and I will help. Um, and the link in there that gets you to the Dataverse, the, the Northwind stuff, um, I will put a copy of this um, report out there for people as well. And I think it is back to you, Rebecca. Amazing. Thank you so much, Laura. This was fantastic. I think feedback already in the chat has been phenomenal so really glad to have you and i think this is a topic that we can definitely explore further um i just wanted to quickly and briefly cover a little bit about reactor we are over time and most of you are already part of our network um, but just so you're aware, we have 11 physical spaces around the world. Currently, most sessions are virtual. So if it happens to work with your time zone, do feel free to join us. Um, we have a few areas where you can do so. We are on meetup.com. Um, so if that's available to you in your region, certainly check it out. You can search specifically for Microsoft Reactor and find the location closest to you. Uh, join. You're more than welcome, you know, if you're not directly physically in that 
you know, city or town, you are still welcome to become a member and follow if the timing works. Um, we, as I've dropped in the chat a few times, are on YouTube. We have a channel there. We are constantly, as Laura pointed out, rolling out a lot of content. We have, you know, contributors from all around the world. And uh, also we sponsor directly some workshops on a weekly basis. So there is always things happening um, during the week, especially with the reactor program. So do check out our recordings. If you've missed some sessions or you have curiosities on certain topics, I'm sure that we have something about it on our YouTube already uh, or coming up. So you can, again, meet up is a great place to check our calendar. We also have a direct website, microsoftreactor.com. You can sign up for our monthly email uh, newsletter, which we don't spam. We send out once a month. And usually when you're signing up for that, you type in your zone or your region so that you get specific events that are just in that area. Um, and then I dropped in the link a couple of times uh, in the chat, uh, the survey link. This one is specific for London, but it generally applies across the board. So do feel free to submit the things that you're interested in, the stuff that you want to see us cover. Um, yeah, like we are, we work with a lot of, community um, experts like Laura, who's an MVP. She's recognized by Microsoft as being an expert on uh, you know, certain topics. We work with uh, Microsoft employees that are experts or have a great interest on a topic. So do certainly um, submit that. And you know, I'm sure there are somebody within our community that we can find to cover some of those topics that you're interested. Always new stuff is coming out. There's maybe older things that you just want to dive into, you know. So do feel free. Please submit a survey. Thank you all again. Um, and then at this time, Laura, I just wanted to once again say thank you so much for being a part of this and joining us today and taking the time out to, you know, My bring this topic to the community. My pleasure. All right, everyone, at this time we will call the session over. Have a good rest of your day. Take care now.